Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is having a wonderful week. Today is Thursday, April 2nd. Yeah, today is the 2nd. And I thought I would come on and work on my diamond painting and chat with you guys for a bit. See how you're all holding up under the circumstances which see what you guys are doing to keep yourselves busy how many uh whips have you guys gotten completed and how many are you of you are um dwindling down your stash um i've only completed one during this lockdown and it was uh diamond art clubs chuck pinson's bluebird song um i've got the seraphina on my drafting table downstairs and seabreeze trail is back in timeout those squares they got me frustrated and it was either either put it in timeout or throw it away and I'm so close to being done with it that I don't want to throw it away. So it's in timeout. Um, I will get to it. I will finish it eventually. But um, right now I am working on um, One Worth Melting. Mandy Manzano Diamond Art Club painting. Um, for anyone who is new or doesn't... Um, has never done this one. This is a round and it is a 42 by 125. So that's a big in. I am doing this for the Mandy DP along that is being done on Instagram. It's Mandy, it's hashtag Mandy DP along 2020. So you can um, go on over to Instagram if you are on Instagram. And put the hashtag in and it'll bring up the many people they're working on a Mandy Manzano painting you were able to pick any painting that you wanted um, this is this is a DP along that is being done by a youtuber oh, excuse me sorry about that um, I will put her link in the description box below because off the top of my head her channel just totally escaped my brain. Mm. I know who it is. Goodness sakes, how can I not know who that was? It is, um, anxiety, was it Den Painting Anxiety Art? I think. Let me check. I should know this. I should have been more prepared, but it was kind of last minute that I decided to jump on here to um, do this whip and chat. Um, I've been busy today doing household things. Um, I had to va uh, vacuum downstairs and um, clean the kitchen up. Um, I'm doing laundry, so if you hear a noise um, in the background, it will that would be my washer or dryer. I've got a load in the washer and the dryer right now yeah it's anxiety art adventures sorry about that so the YouTube channel is anxiety art adventures on Instagram if you put in hashtag Mandy DP along 2020 you will find where people are um, posting their um, progress um, they posted pictures that they've kit of them with the kitted up project ready to go. This started yesterday, April 1st. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it is running, it's running through all of April, May, and possibly June. But if you go to um, Anxiety Art Adventures webpage, uh, YouTube channel, she lists, there's a video um, where she talks about how it's gonna work, so. Um, also, I got some friend mail today. 
I got more patty wax, super sticky or super sticky pad wax. So, yeah. So, the person that sent this to me knows who she is. Thank you very much, sweetie. I appreciate it. So, now I have two. I love this sticker. The sticker is awesome. I love both the stickers, but I really like this one. So, I know I'm currently working out of this one. This one will get put away until I need it. Or maybe I'll have one upstairs and one downstairs, depending on, I don't know. Um, but yep, love the super sticky patty wax. I'm finally figuring out how to use it with my multi placer, but um, and I know they say they recommend not using it with a multi placer, but it can be done. It just takes a little fin dangling, and I'm only using it with a four placer though, either the four placer or the single placer. So anyway, so yeah, I've been doing housework this morning. My husband came home from work this afternoon. And he's got a cold again, as you can tell, or I think you can tell. My voice, I've got, I still have my cold. Um, random sneezing, coughing, just stuffy. Nobody has a fever. Um, nobody has, is having any, you know, issues with breathing. I think it's just, it's the time of the year at this point for colds. And allergies, you know, as well. So I'm not concerned that it's anything, you know, serious. It's just, I think it's just a typical cold. Um, we've survived many of those. So I'm not, not worried. Um, we're still not going out. We have officially been placed on um, a mandatory lockdown. We are... Our governor placed the, put this in place yesterday, the first, and um, basically, if you are out and you don't need to be, you will get a fine, and there is possible jail time. So, you better if you're going to be out and about in my state, you better have a good reason to be out, and you better not lie about it because if they find out you lied, they're looking at facing like two or three different charges on you if you're out and about and you're not supposed to be. So I don't need to go out for anything. I have everything that I need here at home right now. Um, I don't need to go out until next week. And I wouldn't go out next week if I didn't have to, but I have to get my son a prescription, so I have to do that. But anyway, like I said, housework today, husband's sleeping, son's in his room. I think he's in his room recording his YouTube video as well. Um, so yeah, um, seeing that there are um, a lot of the creators right now, because there's not a whole lot to talk about other than what's going on in the world, and that is a horse that is being beaten to death. I mean, we need to be vigilant. We need to um, we we need to remind others to you know be safe and do what they're supposed to do to be able to remain safe and healthy and to keep the people in their community safe and healthy but we need to talk about other other things too i mean our life is on hold in a lot of ways but there's other things that we can talk about so seeing a lot of the creators are doing these get to know me get to know you it, well, the title of it is questions to connect and get to know someone better. So it says 200 not boring questions to connect and get to know someone better. So there is a list of 200. Um, I'm probably going to just do like 25 at a time, maybe 30, just depends. A lot of them might be difficult to answer as far as I might not have an answer. It may not have applied to me or may not be something I've experienced. So that's what, that's more or less what's going to determine how many I answered today. So whatever you're working on, you want to get it out and go with me. I am drinking iced tea today, so I may be stopping and taking sips to prevent my throat from drying out and coughing. 
So if I pause and you don't hear anything, it's me getting a sip of my tea. Um, my husband might pop in and say something. So if you hear that, I apologize, but he might come in to see a, what I'm doing and why I'm talking to myself because he was asleep before I decided to record or B, he might come in to tell me good night, which it's day for him or it's night for him. Day for us It is five till three. He came home from work about one o'clock and gave him some Robitussin and he fell asleep. So now, and that was on the couch. So now he'll end up coming upstairs to go to bed and sleep his nighttime until he has to get up to go to work tonight. So anyway, now I'm just rambling. Let me go ahead and find a color to work on here. And then we will get into these questions. So let's see. All right. So the first question is, what is your favorite way to spend a weekend? My favorite way to spend a weekend is, I mean, in my household, we all have different interests. Um, so it's hard to do family things because we all like something different. And my son, he, I mean, he's 15. He's not so much into the family thing now. It's all video games and on hangout with his friends and Snapchat or not Snapchat. Um, what is that new one? Um, the new social media thing where they record Twitch, I think's what it is. So he's on Twitch and he's on Discord and all that, talking to his friends since he can't be out seeing anybody. So he's busy doing his thing. My husband works um, on Saturdays and then he's so exhausted Saturday night that when he comes home from work he fights trying to stay awake. So yeah, we're all kind of doing our own thing. Um, so ideally it would be spend time with my family. Um, but otherwise a perfect, you know, my favorite way to spend a weekend is diamond painting or crocheting or reading. Um, my goal is, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video is to have a weekend getaway, um, up in Mount Charleston, which is about 40 miles away, or 40 minutes away, maybe a little farther from here. Um, it's pretty, pretty high up. I think it's 4,000 feet, four or 5,000 feet above Vegas. Um, so my goal is to save up and I would like to get a cabin up in the woods for the weekend. Just me take up my diamond paintings and you know, take up like three projects, a diamond painting, um, a crochet project, and then, oh, it would actually be two projects in a book. So a diamond painting, um, a book and a crochet project and spend my weekend reading and crocheting and diamond painting. Um, so it would be one of, doing one of my crafts while binge watching a show on Netflix or maybe there's a, a weekend where they're having a, a marathon of the Golden Girls Special Victims Unit, um, you know, something like that. So that would be my favorite way to spend a weekend. I'm very much I'd rather be home than out. So going out to the clubs or dancing, um, no, no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't interest me. I've, I don't, I was like that when I was younger, but now that I'm in it, as I'm, as I've gotten older, I'd rather be home. All right. So number two, I, that was way long drawn out. What type of music are you into? Um, I don't listen to a whole lot of music unless I'm cleaning the house and that is just to motivate me when I do listen to music. Um, I like 80s music. Um, 
I like country music. Um, I like to listen to Celtic music. Um, so I'm into, you know, 80s music would be like the pop music that the Cindy Lappers and um, the Madonnas, you know, that type, that style of music. What was the best vacation I've ever taken? I've never been on what you could say an actual vacation. Um, where it was like planned vacation. When my first husband was in the Navy, before we got married, he was he deployed for a six month cruise to the Mediterranean. And um, we did surprise him and he didn't plan on us being um, there when his ship came in. He thought he was gonna have to wait another week or two to see me when he got leave and came to come home. But we did surprise him and I was there on the uh, pier when his ship came in. Um, so yeah, I could say that was, that was, a uh, just a weekend in Virginia beach. So yeah, that was fun. That was a long time ago though. Um, where's the next place on your travel bucket list and why? I don't have a travel bucket list. Um, not really. I mean, Ireland is the only place outside of the country that I would like to visit. Um, other than, now, I'll say Canada or Ireland, because I would love to go to Canada. I would like to go to Nova, uh, Nova Scotia. Um, but Ireland would be the other place. Um, there's really nowhere here that it would be necessarily traveling. It's a place that, there's places here in the United States that I would, I want to go and live. So it's a toss up between several states, but other than that, no, there's, I don't like to fly. So most anywhere that I would go would require flying. What are my hobbies? The next question, number five is what are your hobbies and how did you get into them? Well, diamond painting is one of them. Um, but I'll get to diamond painting. I crochet. My grandmother taught me to crochet when I was seven. So that's kind of how I got into that. My grandmother was an avid crocheter and I used to sit and watch her and one day she taught me. Um, well, one day she tried to teach me. Um, from the time that I was seven, which is when she first started to teach me, until I was ten, all I knew how to make was a chain. I could make a chain that would wrap around her, the out the uh, foundation of her house like 12 times. I couldn't do anything else. I was as far as I could go. Um, reading is a hobby. Um, my dad always read to me when I was a child. Um, and then when I learned how to read, it was something that it was kind of um, a family tradition because where I grew up in Ohio, it rained a lot in the spring, fall, and of course in the summer, we got a lot of rain in Ohio. And in the wintertime, it was so dreadly cold that we couldn't go outside much. I'm looking for a drill, for drills here. Um... It was just too bitter cold to go out. Um, my dad loved to read. That was his favorite pastime was reading. So on the weekends when it was too cold or snowing or raining or just wet because it had rained maybe the night before, we would all sit and read. We all had our spots in the living room, and my mom, she she didn't do a whole lot of reading um, at that point in time. I mean, she read, but she preferred to read in, in, at bedtime. That was always her favorite time to read. So, But there was times where she would sit in the living room with us and read. But we'd get our books from the library, and we'd come home, and 
Um, my dad would sit on the couch and he'd read his book. He was a big, he loved to read um, Stephen King books. And then my brother would read his book and I would read mine. And it was something that we were doing, you know, as a family, even though it was an individual thing, we were all doing it together in, in a room together. Um, and then I kind of, as I got, it became a teenager. Then I lost interest in reading. Um, and kind of fell out of it. I started reading heavily again about nine years ago, 10 years ago. So, and that was just due to suggestion by my daughter to read the Twilight series. And that was it. From that point on, I was looking for any kind of paranormal book or about witches or vampires or shapeshifters. And then I got into the like police dramas, police crime type things, suspense. Those are all types of books that I like to read. So, all right. Number six. What was your favorite age growing up? Um, I don't know, I'd say around 10 or 11. Uh, my parents were still married. Um, they divorced when I was 12. Well, 13. They split up when I was 12. Um, so, I'd say anywhere from, you know, my first real memories of childhood, anywhere from, I don't know, I'd say five or six upwards to 10 or 11. But anytime during the time that my parents were still married was my favorite age because, um, <clears throat> you know, my parents were still together. <laughs> okay, what was the last thing that you read digital, digitally or in print. Um, I'm currently reading a book right now called Indigo Fire by Vicki McKeegan. I'm reading that with uh, one of my subscribers. We're doing a book buddy type thing. So we're both reading that. It's really good right now. Um, I mean, we're both early on. We're like in the second and third chapter, but it's it's a good book so far. Um, number eight, would you say you're more of an extrovert or an introvert? No, I'm an introvert. I'm, or, what is it? I've changed a lot over the years. Um, I used to be the type that liked to go out and party all the time and go out and do all those things. Um, I like to go out and, um, you know, go clubbing on the weekends. Um, yeah, and I'm an intro and I am an introvert now. Um, I love to travel, you know, back then I, I would just jump in my car and go and do things. Didn't matter what it was. Last minute I was always ready to go and do something, but now, um, I just would rather be home. I mean, it. I have to. I have to psych myself up just to go to the grocery store half the time. So no, I'd rather be home. Um. And hanging out with people. If I was gonna be with people, I would want it to be a very small group of people. And when I say small group, that they'd have, they'd have to be able to sit comfortably. In my living room. Anything more than that, I couldn't handle. So, I'd say no more than a group maybe of like five or six women. And I think that would be my limit. What is your favorite ice cream topping? Um, hot fudge. And uh, it's a toss-up between hot fudge and peanut butter um, sauce. I used to work at an ice cream shop 
and we, my favorite, I make my own stuff as I went along, but my favorite toppings was the hot fudge and the peanut butter sauce that I would put over, um, chocolate almond chip ice cream. Yeah, that was really good. Okay. Um, number 10, what was the last show you binge watched? I actually was binge watching some Criminal Minds yesterday while I was working on this painting that I'm not working on right now. There's so much confetti here that I'm trying to, it's kind of distracting me. So I can't get the multi-placer going long enough to get going, you know, to lay much down. Okay, so yeah, I binge watched, um, some criminal criminal mind yesterday. I never really watched it when it was on TV or when it first started. My daughter again, she tends to be my suggest suggestive nature on what I should read or watch. So I started watching it um, after I had my neck surgery a couple years ago because I was stuck that all I could do is sit and watch TV. I couldn't crochet or anything cause, or have, or read well because of having to have my head angled down to do so. So I spent my days reading, or I mean reading, watching TV and she got me watching it. And I only watched a few series, or a few episodes of the first season when I kind of lost interest because my medications were taking hold so much that I... To, I was having to watch the same episodes over and over again because I forgot what happened. So now I'm binge watching Criminal Minds. And I am on the second season. And I think I'm like three or four, but three, three or four episodes in to the second season. Okay. Number 11, are you into podcasts or do you only listen to music? Um, I do listen to some podcasts. Um, I like the paranormal podcasts on this app. Um, so I don't listen to them very often. What is my death row meal? Number thir This is number question number 13. My death row meal would be... Um, crab legs. I love crab legs. I can eat my weight in crab legs. Um, so it'd be, it would be like a seafood platter type thing. It would be crab legs, um, scallops. I love scallops. Um, clam strips, if they're breaded and done right. I don't like them rubbery. Um, homemade coleslaw gotta have coleslaw with seafood I don't know what it, there's just something about having coleslaw with seafood breaded shrimp um let's see that would be my main course and my side dish being oh I of course like french fries so the french fries with like fair fries with vinegar with the malted vinegar on it and butter yeah absolutely and for dessert, it would be strawberry pie or strawberry shortcake. So, yeah, that's my death row meal. Number 14, do you like going to the movies or prefer, prefer, prefer watching at home? Prefer watching them at home. Movies and great. Movie theater is great. It's fun to go and sit in the theater. But it's what it costs to go see a movie now. And how people are in the theater sitting there, you're, they're talking, their phones are ringing, their phones are lighting up, they're texting. You know, I'd rather be at home. I'd rather be at home. Number 15, what's your favorite sleeping position? Um, I'm the belly, half belly, half side sleeper, almost like what they would consider the... Um, the um it's like if you 
lay on it half on half on your side and half on your stomach I put a pillow down on the bed and then I put my leg up over the pillow and kind of lay half on my back or half on my stomach and half on my side what is my go-to guilty pleasure number 16 um right now with braces it's hard because most of my go-to guilty pleasures was caramel um but now I mean, other than coffee, that's every day, though. I mean, I have my coffee every day. So that's a, you know, a, a guilty pleasure, I guess, is something that you don't have all the time. So I would say Reese's eggs. The I know Reese cups, period, but the Reese eggs that they have out right now for Easter, those are my favorite because um, it doesn't have the hard edges like the Reese cup has. And it seems like there's more peanut butter in there and they're creamier. So, yeah, I'd say the Reese's Reese cups or Reese eggs. I would rather, I would rather sleep. All right, so that's number 17. In the summer, would you rather sleep with the window open or blast the AC? Well, I live in Las Vegas. So in the summer, we don't have our windows open. We can't. Um, even at the dead of night, it's still a hundred degrees outside. Um, just cause the sun went down doesn't mean the temperatures do. So we may not have humidity, but it's hot. I mean, I have gone to bed in the summer at one o'clock in the morning and it's been a hundred degrees. And then I can wake up at eight or, you know, seven, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning and it, it'll be 85 or 90. So sleeping with the window open isn't an option, but if I was in an area where I could sleep with the window open, I would have my window open. So yeah, I would rather sleep with the window wide open. All right. Number 18. What's your favorite quote from a TV show, movie, or book? Um, hmm. Yeah. I couldn't, I can't even think right now what my favorite quote from a TV show, movie, or book would be. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I've got the mind fog from the cold. So, yeah, I may come back to that one at another time. Um, 19, how old were you when you had your first celebrity crush and who was it? Hey, this is going to show my age. I would have been about nine, ten, and it was Leaf Garrett. It was a tie, a toss up between Leaf Garrett and Sean Cassidy. Yeah, I'd probably say Sean Cassidy was first because I was a, I like to watch the Hardy Boys, and. Of course, anybody who's my age or knows of that era knows that Sean Cassidy was um, in the Hardy Boys. So, yeah. And then Leif Garrett, he has, you know, he was a one-hit wonder with music. And I love the one song that he sang, and I don't remember what it is now. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. My son needed me. So it was just just a quick second. Okay. So anyway, moving on. Number 20. What's the one thing that can instantly make your day better? A phone call or a video message from my four year soon to be four year old granddaughter, Anna. 
She can take and make my, my absolute worst days. She can flip to being my best day. So, yep. Just just see, getting to see on video chat or talk to my three and a half. She'll be four on the 24th of this month granddaughter. Um, I don't get to see her very often physically because they live in Georgia. But, um, yeah, she, she makes everything better. Do I have any pet peeves? Okay. The better question would be don't, or what pet peeves, peeves don't I have? Yes. I have pet peeves. Um, my pet peeves are go coincide with my OCD. I cannot stand to have a bed unmade. Um, it used to be as soon as I woke up, I made my bed. I mean, I rolled out of the bed and I made the bed. I My bed was made before I even went to the bathroom. But my husband um, on the weekends would sleep later than me. So he was still on the bed. And then when he would wake up, I'd come upstairs and make the bed and he would always tell me, you're not supposed to make the bed as soon as you get out of it. You need to let the bed air out for at least 30 minutes. So I was watching the clock for 30 minutes. As soon as 30 minutes was up, I was in there making the bed. Yeah, I cannot stand to have, have an unmade bed. I have a specific way I fold my towels. So if they're not folded the way I fold them, I don't care who it is that's folding them. If I see that they're folded differently, it causes me anxiety um, I hate clutter um, and right now my craft room is cluttered but I don't have the ability right now to have it set the way I want so it is what it is but yeah um, um, dishes dishes have to be washed as soon as you're done eating I'm, I wash dishes while I'm cooking, actually, so when I'm done cooking, really all that is dirty are the dishes that we're going to be eating off of. My pots and pans are already either in the sink waiting to be washed or already hand-washed and drying to where all I have is the dirty, is the, the plates and forks or spoons. Um, I can't stand to have a sink full of dishes. That just annoys me. Um... 22, which meal is your favorite? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Um, I would say breakfast. I love breakfast. Um, French toast, pancakes, omelets, hash browns, bacon, sausage. Yeah, I like all that stuff. So breakfast would be my favorite. Number 23, what song always gets you out on the dance floor? Um... Um, gosh, I can't even think. This has been so long. When I, the last time I did any dancing, I was in California and I was, well, my best friend was, we kind of, we were kind of seeing each other. It was kind of more of a, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's a story anyway. He dan he taught me how to dance, um, salsa, to salsa dance. So there was a, um, song in Spanish, I forget what it's called, but that was the song that, as soon as that song came on, it didn't matter where either one of us were in the club. He could be off in the corner talking to the guys, and I could be off talking to the girls, and that song would come on, and we we found each other and was on the dance floor right away. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Um, 24. When you were a kid, did you eat the crusts on your sandwich or not? No. No, I did not. I'm, I'm an adult and I don't eat the crust. Um, unless it's toast. Now, I, I do like the crust on toast because I like sourdough toast. Um, so, yeah. But now with the braces, I have to cut the crust off of everything and my husband eats it. Uh, number 25. What activity instantly calms me? Diamond painting. Diamond painting is, um, 
it's it's my version of um lorazepam or valium or any anxiety medication diamond pain would be what calms me the most um as much as I would like to say crocheting does, I mean, I enjoy crocheting, don't get me wrong, but having to keep a stitch count and, you know, following that pattern is more difficult to do in a household of people, especially when I have a spouse who watches sports and sports correlates numbers and number... Uh, I'm talking about a player's number or stats on that player, what the score is, that all correlates to numbers, and it will throw off my stitch count every time. So, or I have a set, you know, my son interrupts me in the middle of counting. So, yeah, diamond painting, diamond painting or reading. I like to, you know, I love to read. 26. Ideally, how would you spend your birthday? The same way I'd spend my favorite weekend. Diamond painting or crocheting or reading. Just either either by myself or with the family. It doesn't matter. Number 27, what do you do on your commute to and from work? I'm a stay-at-home mom. So... Anytime I'm commuting from work, it's just commuting from the bedroom to the living room or the kitchen or I'm a stay-at-home mom. Do I have a favorite type of exercise? Um, I like to walk. You know, I just, I don't like walking by myself. So, you know, if there was somebody to walk with, you know, I'd probably walk every day. But I just like walking by myself. I mean, I don't even have to be talking to the person. I just, just knowing that somebody's there walking with me, that, you know, it's an, in, it's an incentive for me to walk if I have somebody else doing it with me. So, okay. Number 29. What is my favorite, what is your favorite season and why? Um, it's a toss up between fall and winter and because, well, I like the rain a lot. Um, I love it when it rains. I love it when it's cool. Um, I love the smell in the air of fall. I love to hear the rustle of leaves and the changing of colors, the changing of the colors of the leaves. So that would be why I like fall, winter. I love the crispness and the, and the fresh air smell as well. I love snow. I think snow is absolutely beautiful. No, I do not like to necessarily be out in the snow, but I do like to look out the window and see the snow on the ground. So, yeah, fall and winter are my favorite seasons. What's the best joke I, you've he ever heard? I haven't a clue. I have not heard a joke in a very long time. And I'm not good at telling jokes, so even if I would try to tell you, you would not find it funny because... I'm not good at telling jokes, so. Um, what's the phone app I use most? Um, it would be a toss-up between YouTube and Facebook. Um, Instagram. I mean, those are the three main apps that I use. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Um, I use them equally, the same amount each day, because I am checking people's posts and watching their videos. I'm going to read some more. 
is he's even dragging them out. They're going back. They're dragging the questions out in detail. There's still a lot of questions. And I'm less than an hour. Number 32. Would you rather cook or order in? Um, it depends. I love to cook. Um, I cook most nights. But there's some days where I just don't feel like cooking. and That's not so much that I don't feel like cooking. It's just, I don't want to clean up the mess that cooking um, creates. So, um, either way, I'm good. If I'm going to order in, um, we have a Chinese food restaurant down the road that we absolutely love. It is the closest to New York Chinese food as we will get this side of the George Washington Bridge, my husband says. So, they've got really, really good food. And when we get food there, um, I get shrimp or vegetable may fun. And before I got the braces on, I would get the crab ragoons and egg rolls. Now it's just the may fun and maybe an egg drop soup, something like that. Number 33. Have you ever disliked something? Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I went to cross my leg and hit the table. Um, have you ever disliked something and then changed your mind? Well, yeah. There's a lot of things that when I was a child I didn't like that as an adult I do. So, yeah. Number 34. What's my favorite board game? Um... Probably Monopoly. I haven't played a board game in a long time. But when I did play board games, I think Monopoly was my favorite. Uh, okay, number 35. How do you take your coffee? Um, which is cream. And it's the flavored creamers. I'm not... I don't care for half and half because I don't like to add sugar to my coffee. Um, so, and I know with the flavored creamers, they're sweetened, but it's, I don't know, it, it's just like a different type of sweetness. So, um, and I don't like black coffee and I don't like coffee without sweetener in it. So like I said, it's just something about adding just regular sugar to my coffee that I don't like. But, um, so I like it with either French vanilla, the coffee meets French vanilla, or coffee meets, um, coconut cream. And lately I've been putting Bailey's cinnamon vanilla in my coffee with, you know, the Bailey's Irish cream. But it's the cinnamon vanilla flavor. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'd like to have some now. But it's too early to be messing with coffee. So, okay. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. It was just a second for you and it was about 20 minutes for me. I had to uh, take the clothes out of the dryer and put the clothes from the washer into the dryer and put everything away. So, anyway, where were we? Um, where, let's see. Number 36. What's your most prized possession and why? Um, that's tough. Um, it would probably be, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it would be a couple things, and it would be jewelry related. I have my mom's wedding rings from 
my stepdad who passed away. It'll be 10 years ago, this July 4th. And she gave them to me now. Um, so nothing, you know, nothing would happen to them, you know, over a period of time. But those rings are extra special because my stepfather, his father was a dentist from way back in the day. And he was a dentist to the stars. Um, they, they lived down in the uh, Thousand Oaks area of California. And um, he had, there was a lot of gifts that had been given to him um, from celebrities and, and such. And later in life, there was um, some, they'd given him like, little gold tokens and little, you know, trinkets that had real gold in them. And he also had gold, pure gold that, um, for like fillings and crowns that when he retired that, you know, he never used, of course. So that gold was melted down and added to the rings as well as, um, some odds and ends gold that my my mom and my stepdad both had and he made their rings uh, my mom had taken stones from other jewelry you know they were you know real real diamonds that she had from other jewelry and they made their ring he handmade their rings so those are a prized possession my grandmother's engagement ring I have that is a prized possession. I have a tennis bracelet that my mother-in-law left for me when she passed away. That is a prized possession, a diamond tennis bracelet. And <clears throat> there was she had a lot of um she had my mother-in-law had a lot of jewelry. And there was some items that were specific to um, one of us girls and that the girls in the family would have been, um, myself, um, her daughter, my sister-in-law, and then my other sister-in-law through marriage. Um, so my brother-in-law's wife, she had specific things that were left for us. And then the rest of the jewelry was for us to go through, um, and pick what we wanted. So, um, Lori, my sister, my sister-in-law, her daughter, of course had, you know, the first option to go through, through the jewelry, which makes sense. It's her daughter. But then myself and my other sister-in-law, we sat down and went through it together. So whatever Lori didn't want, then me and my sister-in-law, Alicia went through and we did it together. So we both, you know, equally had it, got to pick what we wanted. It wasn't a matter of, you know, I picked and took everything I wanted and she was left with things that she may not want. No, we took turns. We put it all out on the table. We took turns picking what we wanted. Well, lo and behold, I did not know that inside the one jewelry box, um, and when I say a box, it's like the box that you buy, you might get a necklace or something in. That's the box that my mother-in-law put the tennis bracelet in for me. Underneath the little insert, there was a cross. And on the cross, it has all the birthstones for my mother-in-law, my father-in-law and both bro uh, brother and sister-in-law and then my son. Now, my brother-in-law, he's August, which is Peridot, which happens to be my father's um, birthstone and my second daughter's birthstone. They're both August babies. November is 
both mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law, Lori. They were all three in November. And then my husband and I share a birthstone. So we are both June babies. So um, I ended up, I guess it's, I guess in say, you know, most people get like a mother-in-law, or I mean a mother-in-law, get a mother's ring with their children's birthstones and stuff, such in it. She has had a cross made, um, a necklace, you know, a cross on a necklace made with her children's birthstones. So that is a prized possession. So yeah, those would be my prized possessions. <sighs> okay, um, number 37. Is there any product that you couldn't live without? Um, well, it depends on what type of product they're talking about. Um, excuse me. If we're talking um, diamond painting, diamond painting wise, my light pad. My light, my light pad is my world. Um, if we're talking about a like a makeup product, no, not really. I'm not wearing makeup right now. That's going to be in another video. I'm going to talk about that. But no, I'd say my light pad. Um, product that said that doesn't even make sense. Product. Is there any product that you couldn't live without? I don't know. That one's a hard one. This is pro no, product. I'd say Starbucks. There we go. Starbucks. All right. Number 38. Do you sleep with a top sheet? Why and why not? Yes. Yes, I do sleep with the top sheet. I like to feel the coolness of the top sheet against my skin because, well, like I said, I don't like to be hot. So, yes, I do sleep with a top sheet. Um, number 39. If you could have any exotic animal as a pet, which will, would it be? Um, well, I believe all your exotic animals belong in the wild in their own natural habitat. But if I could live in the habitat with them, it would be either a dolphin, which I know is not necessarily exotic, but to me it is, or a black panther. I love black panthers. I actually have black panthers, a tattoo on my leg. Uh, number 40. Would you rather spend a day at the beach or poolside? Um, the beach, but I don't go, I don't go in the ocean, so I would just walk on the beach or sit on the beach and read. Um, I mean, I like I will go in a pool, but I I like the beauty of the beach. I like the clear clearness clearness and salt free water of a pool. And yeah. I'd spend the day at the beach. Okay. Number 41. What's your favorite thing about your current job? That I can stay home. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I don't have a job. Number 42. What annoys you most? Um, this, this, that could be an all-day question. Um, Rudeness, rudeness and people being, um, feeling self-entitled, this entitlement thing, yeah, so rudeness and self-entitlement. Number 43, what's the career highlight you're most proud of? Um, well... I was a dropout in high school. Um, I did go and get my e my GED later in life. I tried, I attempted it three times and failed. And then I gave up for a while. And then in 2008, I went back and got my GED. So that's, that's something that I'm proud of. Um, 
as far as a career goes, well, I mean, I don't have a career because I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I did go to school to become a medical assistant, and um, due to my neck and back, I'm not able to work, but um, during my time in school, um, I graduated with high honors. I had a GPA of a 3.89, so I'm quite proud of that. Um, during the time I went to school, I was doing it by myself with my son, because my husband, who we weren't married yet at the time, we were engaged, but he was having to work out of state, so um, I had to juggle my school schedule which was pretty intense because it was a blended course. I went to school um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday of one week, and then the next week was just Tuesday, Thursday. It was at the actual classroom, and then um, the rest was um, online. It was a blended course. So I was juggling, you know, going to school, studying. It was an intense course because it was only seven months. So the homework and the home, the online course, the portion of it was extensive. There was an insane amount of studying and reading and work and tests, quizzes. It was, it was rough. And still had to manage my son, who at that time was just starting to show um, the signs of the autism, but hadn't been diagnosed um, because we couldn't find a doctor that would listen to me. And again, that's going to be for another day too. I have a story about that. So I was quite proud to um, graduate with such a high GPA and only missed one day of school during that seven months. Had it, and that was because the front end of my husband's truck went out, and I had his truck, and I couldn't get to school. So if it weren't wouldn't have been for that, I would have had perfect attendance, and I was proud of that too. Okay, number forty-four. Do you think you'll stay at your current company? Why? Why? Well, yeah, my current company is my husband, and my son. So, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Um, yeah, like this is talking about career stuff, so. Um, none of that's going to apply to me. Um... Number 48, how would your 10-year-old self react to what you do? My 10-year-old self would be um, mortified at being a stay-at-home mom. Because when I was 10 years old, I would dream that I was going to be some hoity-toity big wig executive or you know I was going to be a, I was going to have a wear a three piece or a two piece you know um, you know like skirt you know like the pencil skirt or such and I was going to work on Wall Street or work in New York somewhere I was going to carry a briefcase and I was going to, you know, make big bucks and I was going to be very successful and all that. Yeah, that was my 10-year-old self. Or I wanted to be a journalist. That was something that I dreamed of. But I was going to live in New York and I was going to live in one of the studio apartments like the, the flats, the studio flats in New York. And I was going to make a lot of money and I was going to be very successful so the 10-year-old self wouldn't be 
mortified of the lack of my income being, you know, that I don't get paid to be a stay-at-home mom. But my 10-year-old 10-year-old self would have been mortified that I was a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, because I had, when I was 10 years old, I, I didn't even want to have kids, which, you know, I was awfully young. But I wanted to be a career woman. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, it says, what do you remember most about your first job? My very first job, I was a waitress at an Italian restaurant. No, actually, I'm sorry. That was my second job. I worked at a, um, it was kind of like a, uh, it was a buffet style type restaurant. It was called Ponderosa Steakhouse in Ohio, where there was a buffet, but you could also order steaks or grilled chicken or what have you. So yeah, I was a waitress. And I started um, on my 16th birthday. Yeah, that was the next question, kind of, did you start working immediately or after finishing school? Why or why not? No. I was 16 years old, and I started working on my 16th birthday. All right, let's try and get past all these career questions, because I'm past all that. Yeah. I'm just trying to find questions that aren't talking about career. And that's all this is right now. Career questions. Okay, let's there we go. It's family. How much time do you spend with your family? Um, not a lot, obviously, with my husband working the way he works. Um so, like, my immediate family, husband, son, and we spend time that we can together. It's just a few hours a night or a few hours during the day before he goes to work. Or, I mean, after he gets off work or a few hours before he goes to work. It's not a lot. Um, as far as my, 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 my mom, um, well, my mom lives in Ohio and... Sad to say I have not been home since summer of 2016 because, well, 2017 we bought our house that we are living in now. 2018 I had my neck surgery. 2019 I couldn't go home because, or yeah, 2017, the house, 2018, the sur next surgery, 2019, we weren't sure if my son was going to have to go to summer school, and then we found out he wasn't going to have to. Um, it was too late to get tickets, but also we had a leak in our downstairs bathroom, so it took two months for them to get that fixed, and now... The plan was to try and go home this summer, and now with what's going on with the, you know, in in our world right now, that's not an option either. So, yeah, it's this will be the fourth summer since I've been home, and I can only go home in the summer because of my son in school. I'm not one of those parents to take my son out, or child out of school for a vacation. Um, I feel being in school is, you know. He misses school when he's sick, and there's a limit to how many days of school you can miss. And I, I don't have a crystal ball that's going to show me the future and tell me, oh, yeah, well, he's only he's not going to get sick this, this year, so he's not going to miss school. So, no, I'm not going to do that. So I don't get to spend much time with my family. Um, my father-in-law and my sis, brother and sister-in-law, they live out of state, too. So we only see them um, over the holidays. Um, number 82, who do you most like spending time with and why? Um, oh, and back to the 81. My children live all over. Um, my oldest daughter and my three grandchildren with her live in Ohio. So 
I don't see them very often either. My second daughter and her two children live in Georgia. And my third daughter has, is estranged. Um, she has nothing to do with anybody in either, either side of her family. Lives in um, Southern California or Northern California. And then there's my son. So I probably spend more time with my son than anybody. Um, who do you like spending time with and why? Um, mm, I don't know. That's one that I just would rather not answer because I don't want to make somebody feel, um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't want to answer that. I kind of think, I don't, I don't think that's always a, a good question. So, all right. What traits are most important to you and your family members? Loyalty, um, acceptance, unconditional love, yep, um, how do I define my family now, <laughs> we're a dysfunctional bunch, We are definitely a dysfunctional bunch. I mean, I love my family. Um, wouldn't trade them for anything, but we are a we are a dysfunctional bunch. Um, who am I closest to, and why? Um, I don't know. I, I probably my mom because I mean I don't have a lot of family left. Um, so as far as family goes, probably my mom. As far as my children go, um, probably my second daughter. We talk often, I mean, not as often as we used to now that she's busy with two little ones, but we used to talk multiple times a day, every day. Um, probably my husband, though, because, you know, we see each other every day. Um, do I want a family, do you want a family of your own, number 87? Um, I have a family of my own. I have four children and five grandchildren. So I, I have a family of my own. Uh, what is your fam favorite family tradition? Um, we don't really have a family tradition anymore. And um, I mean, I grew up with family traditions. But all of our family was in the same state, so we were able to, to do the same, you know, have a tradition. Now, <coughs> the families, we don't see each other like we, you know, used to. And my husband, he didn't really have any traditions. He's not one for traditions, so we don't really have a family tradition. Not really. Number 89, if you could change your relationship with a family member, would you? If so, whom? Well, if I could change my a relationship with my youngest daughter, I would. But she she's cut everybody out of her life. Her father, her stepmother, myself, her grandparents, everyone. She just turned 23 on the 28th of this month, and she has nothing to do with anybody. She made it very clear she doesn't like anybody in her family. She doesn't need her family. Um, so, yeah, I, 
and she's not given an answer. She doesn't, she won't tell us what's wrong with her family, that she doesn't like them or want it. She just, yeah, so, whatever. Um, 90, what was it like growing up as the youngest, oldest, or only child? Um, I was the oldest of two, and <laughs> I had a little brother who everything came easy to him. Um, he was spoiled and I was that child that, um, I was in competition. I mean, I had a good childhood. Um, my father was unbelievable and, um, that's another story, too. I have a lot of stories to tell. It's just um, opening up about things, you know, can be, to strangers can be a little difficult, but eventually I'll tell that story. But, you know, I had a good childhood. I, I had a good childhood. It was just, I competed for attention with, my little brother because, well, like I said, he was the good boy. He did everything he was supposed to do. He got good grades. You know, I had to be that role model. You know, I was the one that had to try things. If I didn't like them, I didn't have to eat them, but I had to try it whether I wanted to or not. My brother didn't have to try anything. If, if he said he didn't want to eat it, he didn't have to eat it. Um... If he didn't feel like, if he didn't want to clean his room, he didn't have to clean his room. So, yeah, being the oldest kind of wasn't to my advantage, but, yeah. All right, did your family take vacations together? Now, we don't take vacations. Um, we never did as a child, and when I was a kid, um, no one really takes vacations on my immediate side of the family. Um, I have aunts and uncles at vacation, but not together. What's your favorite family memory? Um, it's not just one memory, but it was family Christmases at my grandparents. Everybody, um, this is at my mom's parents, every Christmas Eve we would go over to my grandma's house for Christmas Eve. My grandfather would make a beef roast that was unbelievable. It was huge. And um, he made his own marinade with wine. And he would, my grandmother would make these roasted potatoes. And that would be our Christmas dinner, a Christmas Eve dinner. Along with all the, you know, trays of cookies and desserts and all this stuff. And there was always shrimp cocktail. That was a given. And then when it was time, you know, the women would go in the kitchen and they would be cleaning up the kitchen, putting all the food away. The guys, I come from a musically inclined family. Um, and it was more of a country style family. So all the guys would go, and they all played a musical instrument. My grandfather could play any stringed instrument that you put in his hands. My um, my mom's brother, her second brother, or her first brother, the middle brother, he played steel guitar, and then her younger brother played um, lead guitar. My grandfather could also play the fiddle. Well, like I said, any stringed instrument, but he played the harmonica. And if I remember correctly, I think he could play the spoons, too. But, um, so they would go in the living room. All the guys would gather around the living room. And they would get their guitars out. And they would sit and play music. And there was always Christmas music playing faintly in the background. Um, but they'd all be in the living room. And then... All of us kids, we were in my grandmother's room, well, the downstairs room. 
That was the room that my grandma would go and sleep in if my grandfather was snoring. Um, but all of a sudden, you know, my grandfather, we'd hear these bells. And here my grandfather had gotten hold of some sleigh bells. And we'd hear these bells ringing. And he would have my uncle go upstairs in the attic and tap on the ceiling or the floor of the attic, which would be the ceiling above our heads, and make it sound like reindeer. He hoofs on the ceiling or on the roof, and then um, the bells, my grandfather would be jingling the bells around. And then we'd come out, and all of a sudden we'd see all the presents under the tree. So we'd all gather around in the living room, and we'd open our presents. And, yeah, that's... That's my favorite. My, that's my favorite family memory. Favorite favorite family memory. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ninety three. What TV family most reminds you of your own? Uh, um. Hmm. Well, if we're talking my own, like right, my immediate husband. Myself and my son. Um, me, we are a cross between Edith and Archie from All in the Family and Frank and Marie Barone from Raymond. Uh, Everybody Loves Raymond and Carrie and Doug from <laughs> King of Queens. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a combination of all. Do you ever wish you were raised differently? In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. 95. What's the best piece of advice a family member has given you? Um, my grandma. She always told me... Um, you can hide from a thief, but not from a liar. So, you know, a liar, they'll always shed their skin. They're like a snake. But a thief, you know, don't, you'll never, unless you catch them in the act, you'll never know. But a liar will always shed their skin. Okay, um, I'll just do a couple more of these and then I want to talk about something. Um, 96, do you wish you had more siblings? If so, why? Yes, I do. Um, I wish I would have had an older brother, and I wish I would have had a sister. I just have one brother, and he's four years younger. 97, did you ever hide anything from or lie to your parents? Well, of course I did. That's why my grandmother told me, gave me that piece of advice. You can hide from a thief and not from a liar. My grandmother could not handle, could not stomach a thief or a liar, but she could stomach a liar less than a thief. Because if you lied to her, you were just as bad as a thief because she wouldn't be able to trust you. You can't trust a thief. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hid grades and, you know, I hid, I, my grandma, you know, I'd be told I couldn't have something and I would sneak it and eat it anyways. Um, yeah, I think we all did. All kids did. And if you said you didn't, you're lying. 98, if you had a family business, what would it be? Uh, it would be work, it would be a restaurant. It would be a family restaurant. 99, do you and your family have nicknames for each other? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, when I was a kid growing up, my, because I talk so much, and you guys know I talk a lot. Um, my dad used to call me Lips Jr. Or Jaws Jr. I didn't like it when I was a kid. Um, my dad died two years ago. No, three years ago. Let's see. It'll, yeah, he'll be gone three years on the 6th, 6th or 7th of June. Because, and I say 6th or 7th, because, well, he was in, Ohio, he lived in Ohio, and 
I'm here in Vegas, so East Coast and Eastern Time Zone and Pacific Time Zone. I'm not sure exactly if he died after midnight, being which would be the 6th, or if he died before midnight. Or, I mean, if he died before midnight, it would have been the 6th. If he died after midnight, it would have been the 7th, my time. Um, as I got notified at a little after 9 p.m., my time that he had died, but I don't know how long he had been gone before they notified me. So, um, I would give anything to hear him call me Lips Jr., or Lips or Josh Jr. now. Um, my husband, we have nicknames for each other. Um, you know, it, it varies from day to day. They're all nice names, though. And one, number 100, what's your favorite way to spend time with your family? Um, just doing things, you know, whether it's just, maybe it's popping popcorn and having snacks and watching TV or um, maybe it's outside in the pool. Just, you don't have to be doing anything to be with your family to enjoy it. Um, spending time with your family doesn't require money or activity it can just be being in the room together and because especially right now this this is a hard time in the world so many family members are losing family members or so many families are losing family members and they're not even able to be with them when they're losing them they are having to look through plate glass to say goodbye or they're not even able to be in the hospital when it's happening so it could just be sitting in the room just having a conversation about what they plan on you know what what you plan maybe dreams maybe making plans to do something later in life or whatever it's just spending time with your family is important because we don't, we're not guaranteed tomorrow we're not guaranteed next week. So value every chance that you have with your family. And remember to tell your family members every day that you love them and that you appreciate them. Because it's not the same, you know, me telling my dad I love him every day isn't the same as it was telling him I loved him when he was alive. Don't have regrets. Don't wish you could have or that you should have. Do it now so you never have to say, I wish I would have or I wish I could have or I should have done this or I shouldn't have done that. So, okay. That's enough of the questions for today. I will go through these and answer the rest of them on another video. I um, just want to let you know that uh, I am still planning on doing my giveaway. I am nine subscribers away from 200. Once I reach 200, then I will announce um, the giveaway in, in detail. I said I currently have um, the pen from Rachel Ray Crafts. I am showed that in my last video. And I can't reach it right now or I'd show it again. I have a couple other little things that um, I'm working on that'll go in the giveaway. So um, a lot of the things are going to be a surprise. There's going to be a few, you know, a few surprises in there. So hopefully we will be able to, um, my goal was to have my giveaway or my 200 subscribers by April 1st. So I could go ahead and announce and let you know what all you're going to have to do. But it's been a little slower than I planned, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, also, my live schedule has been kind of all over the place. But um, I'm trying to figure out a better method. Um, I have some people that like when I go live late at night, um, after 11 Eastern time. 
because the they're on another time zone, um, geometric time zone. Um, but then I have other ones that would like me to go during the day. So I'm, I might start doing two lives a week so I can please both, you know, groups of people. Um, my lives, you know, I'm still trying to work out a schedule. So we got that. Um, I have been in touch with Rachel from Treasure Studio Arts. And my custom is in production right now. So hopefully um, I will. Hopefully I will hear um, that it's you know shipped here soon. So once I find that out, then I'll be able to let you know about that. Also, uh, me and Sherry from uh, Diamond Art Addiction, we've been in contact with one another. Um, we've got something up our sleeve. I'm waiting um, to hear from her when we are going to announce it. Once I hear from her, then I will let you know. But we do have something in the works going on with that. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description box below. If you'd like to answer some of the questions in the comments about um, what I put or what the questions I was answering, please feel free. I will link the um, 200 questions in the description block, description box, excuse me. I didn't get very much diamond painting done. I'm just kind of, yeah, <clears throat> um, all over the place today. I think I'm going to, hold on one second. My son insists on interrupting me. One second, please. Sorry, I'm back. Came, he was four times behind me trying to get my attention and I kept waving him off and waving him off. He wouldn't take the hint. Um, anyway, now I lost my train of thought. Um, but yes, I, I'm going to reach out to Sherry and talk to her and see if we want to announce what we've talked about or not, or if we're going to hold off. But, um, once I find everything out, I will probably have another whip and chat this week, um, like Saturday. Or I might go live later on tonight. I don't know. I just, we'll see. So, but, you know, I hope you all stay safe. Um, take care of one another in your home. You can always, you know, you don't have to see your neighbors. You can call your neighbors, check up on them, make sure that they're okay. If you happen to be going to the grocery store and you have a neighbor that, you know, might need something, reach out to your neighbor, ask them if there's something that they can pick, you can pick up for them at the store. You don't have to, you know, be in contact with one another to do these things. Um, the girl that I babysit for had Krispy Kreme donuts. They were giving away for free to medical and first responders and law enforcement on Monday. She calls me and tells me she picked me up a dozen donuts. But because of social distancing, we couldn't, you know, she couldn't hand them to me. So she sat them outside and told me that they were there and I went out and got them. You know, you can have your neighbor put type, you know, she can put a, tell you what she needs at the store, what he needs at the store. And she can tape the money to an envelope at the door. And when you know, you call her and tell her, oh, I picked up your groceries. I'm on the way. You can, you know, holler at her, call her or honk the horn. When she's there, she can put the money and tape it to the door or lay it under the mat and you can put her groceries there. But we need to help each other, especially our elderly right now, because they're the most at risk. And the less that they have to be out in the elements and in the environment, the better for them and us. So, you know, reach out, say hi to your neighbor. Right now, we're all sitting here, we're lonely. Um, when, we're, when we have a family that we live with, we have children and a spouse, 
we're lonely for the outside world. Imagine our elderly who live alone and they rely on their grandchildren and their, their children to visit them and they can't now. This is the time when we have to come together and think of others as well as ourselves. We can think of others in a safe manner just by reaching out through a phone call or you know, writing a little note, taping it to the neighbor's door, just saying hi. Is there anything I can do to help you? If you see your neighbor's grass is growing and it needs cut or there's trash in their yard, this is an opportunity to get outside and get fresh air. There's nothing that says we can't be outside of our house. We just can't be in groups and around contact, close contact to people. But this is a time where you can pick up the trash in your neighbor's yard or offer to take your neighbor's dog for a walk. Maybe your neighbor's afraid to walk outside because they've got a compromised immune system. So an opportunity that you could walk their dog or take their trash cans to the street. But just thinking of others, but still being safe is what's important right now. So I'm wishing everybody the best. I'm hoping everybody is healthy, staying, and stays healthy. And I will talk to you guys again later. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Or bye, guys. I don't know why I say bye-bye. I'm not on the phone. Bye, guys.